No, when when I was talking about beakers yesterday, I was talking about these beakers, not you beaker. Um, yeah, I wasn't. I know you're a scientist and you work in a lab, but I was talking about beakers that you put liquids in. I wasn't talking about you. All right, but you can you can hang here and see what we're doing today. Um, but yeah, I was talking about these beakers. Okay, they're cool, just like you. I love your hair. Looks very familiar. Um, but let's just move on. Oh, <laughs> hey, second grade students. Here we are with day two. Yes, it is beaker, not this beaker. We are going to use a beaker, um, but beaker is also here. He thought I was talking about him. Just not talking about him. Anyway, so we have day two, which um, we are going to look at how we can find the volume of solid objects like a pencil or, um, or even something like a Lego piece. Um, we can find the volume of liquids very easily using beakers or graduated cylinders. We know that sometimes containers um, are not as precise, especially beakers, because they might skip count by 50s or 100s. I've even seen some that skip count by thousands. So if you need to be really precise, um, you would want to use um, a graduated cylinder like that um, but today we're going to look at day two and we are going to see how whoa, it's the beaker show we can see how we can find the volume of solid objects and how are solids different than liquids what how are their physical properties how are they different how are solids and liquids different in their physical properties you can uh, talk about that as i switch over to my camera so we can see what tools we're going to use. Obviously, I have a recording sheet here. So day two of my SLAM, which is available. And you can also use um, your science notebook. Totally cool. We're going to do a little bit of math today. We have to do that. So day two starts with, I have my graduated cylinder here. I have my huh, beaker with some water. I have also a pipette because I want to be precise. So if I go over um, my milliliters, if I'm not precise, I need to uh, take a little bit out. Uh, I can use my pipette to get out some of the water uh, because these go up by one. So this is going to be a lot more precise. So what we're going to do is we have some solid objects. So I have some very solid objects, five, and you might have some different objects. It's OK. Um, just five objects that will definitely fit into the top of your graduate cylinder that you can get um, in and out pretty easily. So you want to definitely find those. It doesn't matter. I would definitely pick some items that have um, different shapes and different sizes um, so you can find their volume. So we know volume is the amount of space something takes up. So we know the water in this graduated cylinder takes up a space of 50 milliliters so i have it right on 50 milliliters already i poured some water in there so i'm ready to go so on day two finding the volume of objects so it says number one pour 50 milliliters of water from the beaker into the graduate cylinder done drop object one into the graduate cylinder so write in what is your object one i'm going to drop in my random number generator cube into the top of the graduated cylinder. Now, remember what I talked about losing milliliters? Um, you could do that. You could splash some of the milliliters, some water out, and you would lose a milliliter. Remember I said four drops of water is about one milliliter. So a couple things you could do. You could cup the top when you drop it in. So it's cup the top. Or you can even turn and just let it slide, um, let the object slide down in the graduate cylinder. OK, so I'm writing down cube. If you want to do that with me or if you have a different object, you can go ahead and write that object on number two. So my is a cube for that and I'm going to slide it so I don't lose any milliliters. There we go. Sweet. There it goes down to the bottom. OK. 
Now I'm going to read the graduated cylinder. So I'm going to get down eye level because sometimes when you look at the graduated cylinder, it kind of looks like a curve meniscus. So you want to make sure you look at that carefully and always have your partner uh, help you out. So it looks like I'm at 52. 52. So it went up to 52, which is very interesting. So this is number three. Uh, read the graduate cylinder. What is the new volume? So you're going to put 52. OK, well, why? Here's a question. Why did the volume rise? Why did it go from 50 to 52? Why do you think that happened? Hmm. Why did the water level rise? What did the cube do? Very interesting. So you're going to want to subtract. We want to find the volume of that cube now. So subtract 50 milliliters from the new volume. And there's a little workspace um, that you can use right there. So since it's simple math, you can do some mental math there. Um, so that means if I do some subtraction, uh, 50 from uh, 52, we know that's two milliliters. So object number one, my cube, is two milliliters. So I know it takes up space of two milliliters. Very cool. So that's how you can find the um, volume of solid objects. And this is called displacement. So basically the cube is taking up space, so it's pushing the water up. Um, so we know that the object, my cube, is two milliliters. Very cool. So I'm going to now get my cube out of there. Like that, put it back in the beaker. And I can get put my cube somewhere else. There we go. And now I want to refill my graduated cylinder because I'm going to do my second object. All right. I'm just going to get you started with a couple objects. And I'll let you guys do the rest. <laughs> Right, I get it right. Look at that, right at 50 milliliters. Perfect. And if I went over, um, it's really good to use the pipette because then I can easily take out some of the water um, rather than trying to get it back in the beaker. Um, it'll save some time. So, my second object, let's see, I'm going to pick the, I'm going to do the pencil this time. How about the pencil? My pencil. I'm going to do the same procedure. So you're going to re uh, repeat the steps one through five for objects two, three, four, and five. Okay. So object two, my pencil. Um, I know I'm starting with 50. So I'm going to drop my pencil in here. Woo! And it went up to one, two, three. So it went up to 54. Mm -hmm. So it went up to 54. So now you can find the volume of the pencil. Subtracting 50 from 54, not too hard there. So I know it is four milliliters. So for object two, my pencil, new volume is 54. And then the volume of object two is four milliliters. So see how easy that is. Um, being very precise, we'll pour that back in here. And then the cool thing is once you're done with all your objects, you can then um, rate them which objects had uh, more volume than the others, which objects took up more space. So I do have some other objects I'm going to, and you can probably predict, I have a, a ball. Okay. I also have a Lego, Lego piece. And I also have a paper clip, a large paper clip as well. I can get it and also have a large paper clip. So those are my five objects that I'm going to continue to use. So very cool. Those are my tools that I used to find the, uh, the volume of solid objects. Now I am going to leave you with a question here. As I was holding some of these objects, 
So I have these two objects here. I have the Lego and the ball. I don't know what their volume is. I'm going to tell you this thing. Um, the Lego is a lot lighter than the ball. So I'm thinking the ball has more mass than the Lego. Hmm. If, is mass and volume the same? So if an object has a certain volume, does it also have the same mass? So if my cube was two milliliters, does it mean that makes that also two grams? Is mass and volume the same? Is it the same number? I wonder. And just because it's heavier, this ball has more mass, will it have more volume than the Lego? which is looks like it's bigger, but it's a lot lighter. So are mass and volume the same thing? I don't know. I'm going to let you guys think about that. Um, go ahead and complete all five of your objects. And uh, thank you guys for joining for the lab. Thank you, Beaker, for being here as well. Have a lot of fun with Volume Lab. And let's go. Let's get some science done.